Hello and welcome to a lunchtime chat. This is going to be my second interview with a real Roswell person. Today's interview is with Mark Salas. I want to give a couple of qualifiers before we start the interview because I am time traveling. Yes, that's correct. I'm time traveling. So in part of the interview, I we both discuss volunteers and the trend for people to want to give more of their money than their time. I want you to know that that is a very general observation. Um, I'm not talking about my own parish. My own parish has the most wonderful volunteers who often are willing to give both their time and their money. And I don't know how the church would run without those volunteers. And I, the second qualifier is <laughs> uh, I see in there that I harass Mark to do music at funerals. Well, honestly, I don't have to. He is very good about doing funerals. He loves to do music and he is a helper at heart, I think. And with that, uh, I will go ahead and move to the interview on the mark. That's the name of his business, by the way, on the mark, get set and work. Hi. <laughs> I know you because you do the tech where I work, but, um, as we're going to get to in a second, you do a whole bunch of other things. Too many things, but yes. Yeah, so I didn't even ask for a bio from you because like your business card is practically a bio and I honestly cannot believe that you can fit all of that on one business card <laughs> as you just nod. Yes. It makes it harder for people to read, but it's also a good thing to like say, pay attention to me, but don't at the same time. <laughs> Well, um, you have the double-sided business card, which is always good. Uh, you could practically fit your entire life story on one side, right? Yeah, one side, one and a half, 50, yeah. same yeah. thing, right? Right. Oh, so my, my main question for everyone I interview is, how the heck did you end up in Roswell, New Mexico? Well, it's both a good thing and a bad thing. Oh, okay. On the downside, I was born and raised here. Oh, one of those. Yes, but like on the good side, I love it now. And Roswell's one of those weird things where it like catches you. And if you spend like any amount of time here, you hate it, but you just uh -huh. love it at the same time and can't leave. Uh, or you yes. Like end up back here. Well, I guess you have to spend enough time because it took me probably about seven years before I went from hate to to loving it plus hating it at the same time. I think you have to, you know, give it give it some time. Maybe maybe five years plus would be the, the good uh, mark. I think so. Think of it like a <laughs> Venus flytrap. It takes a little bit of time, but then it just gets you. It gets you, a Venus flytrap. Yes. Is your family from here? Uh, my mom is, but my grandparents on my mom's side is from Eagle Pass, Texas. Oh, okay. So you have Texans in your family. Yes. I don't know what to make of that. I'll just accept it for now because, <laughs> you know, there's that rivalry between New Mexico and Texas. What do you make of that? I wish I could say I paid attention to it, but... You don't? I don't. Like, I have no life. It's always like work, home, pets. Work, home, pets. How many pets do you have? Have two. Um, Bubba, a uh, husky, and Zia, a uh, bearded dragon. Oh, oh, a bearded dragon? Yes. Does he shoot fire from his mouth? I wish. It would be so much more entertaining. Oh. She just, like, has an attitude and just stares at you if you make any noise or even walk into a room. <laughs> it's like an instant, like, mad dog. What are you doing here? Well, why is it called a dragon if it doesn't shoot fire from its mouth? Uh, because it's scaly like a dragon and it puffs up like a dragon, like it wants to spit fire. Have you met any dragons? Um, <laughs> technically no, but at the same time, yes. I met someone who identified as a dragon here. You did not. I did, yeah. Who? I don't remember I mean, you don't have to give name, names, but... but... Like, <laughs> um, I was at Pepper's one night and this guy comes in, he's got like painted scales on and... Um, he's like telling everybody as he goes table to table, oh, I'm a dragon. Don't really? call me he or she. I'm the dragon. So did management do anything about this gentleman? No, because like he wasn't causing issues. He just like, 
introduced himself to every table as like the dragon. Oh, and it's not wrong to be a dragon necessarily. I, I guess it all depends on your perspective of it. Is that the only time you have met this person? Yes. Did it occur to you that maybe you were hallucinating? <laughs> I mean, it's not a high possibility, or I also thought, like, am I being pranked? Is this like that prank TV show where um, they set people up to go do weird things to get people's reactions? Um, I, I, okay. The wind. I did not utilize the rock that I used last time, which is still sitting on the table, to hold down my little cheat sheet, and it blew away. Do you have the back of your business card memorized? Mostly, yeah. Mostly. Okay. Like 99.2%? 99.2%. I think the first thing on there is piano tuning. It is, yes. And I also already know before I ask you about this that you are part of the music community here in Roswell. I know because I've been harassing you literally since I've worked here to do funerals, to play music at funerals. I've been harassing you constantly for like two years now, over two years. Yes. Yes. And do you come from a musical family? I do not. Um... So I'm the only one in my family that plays an instrument, but my grandparents like to sing. So that's like the extent of the music in my family. Well, how did you get into music to begin with? Well, um, I think I was about 12 years old and I was watching a TV show. I can't even remember what it was, but it had this like kid band. And then all of a sudden it's, oh, that looks cool. I want to do it. Join a kid band? No, just like do the music side of it, like start playing an instrument and then Next thing you know, there's like 12 instruments within like two years that I learned how to play. Well, let's get back to those 12 instruments in a minute because I'm still imagining you in a kid band. And I want to know if you choreographed any dance moves with your no. imaginary kid band. <laughs> Never. I could not dance to save my life. Not even at home in your room? Nope. No? Never even tried it. Never even tried it. Well, I'm very disappointed in you, and I don't know if I want to continue this interview because I, I want to imagine you in this kid band that does choreographed dance moves. <laughs> well, would it really be a kid band, though? I mean, how can you do choreographed kids, move, kids moves if you're playing the instruments? I, I don't know. That's where creativity comes in. <laughs> I mean, come on. You know, you could... You, uh, play the piano do like some roll around on the keys and uh, and then land back on your bench i mean that's possible i've seen some odd stuff like that but... and then you could you know get up and start doing these choreographed moves with your with the other members of your band and then and then the music will keep playing and everybody be like that's amazing how can he play music while he's dancing and it, it will be a complete mystery how that is workable Absolutely. It'd be like the um, alien hybrids we're known for in Roswell. Oh, the alien hybrids? Yeah, apparently, anyways. Uh, tell me more about that. So I have a friend that like dove way into the alien stuff. Okay. So his explanation is that when the aliens crash landed here, um, they mated with people. Okay. And made really smart, intelligent people that like help technologically advance stuff. Um, so that's his response is anytime anyone's smart is, oh, they have to be an alien hybrid. Now, it, did this person ever listen to or read David Icke? That I don't know. You don't know. Do you know who David Icke is? I do not know. He is the grand master alien reptilian conspiracy theorist. But uh, I think it's really interesting because he... Uh, decided, determined that people with um, RH negative blood type, which I am RH negative, I don't know if I should give out that information on YouTube. Somebody might kill me now for my RH negative blood or something. I don't know. Anyway, he decided that that was a reptilian alien blood type. Do you think that I'm part alien? Well, I mean, it's possible you're in Roswell now. Well, yeah, so. but I wasn't born here. Well, that doesn't mean that something didn't, like, draw take me, over you. Draw me back? Pretty much, yeah. But I, I've had the RH-negative blood since birth. At least, I think. I mean, I, I, 
I didn't test my own blood when I was born, I can't say for sure. Well, you never know if it's like all just put out there for you to do that. Hmm. Interesting. I'm going to have to think about that. Do you think that this friend of yours, um, do you think that he would like to do an interview? I think so. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that at another time because yeah, I would, I need to get an alien researcher. Of course I, I need this information on my YouTube channel and he will happily fill you in on everything. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yes. Oh, great. So I, I did have more that I wanted to talk to you about music because I think that's probably a big part of your life. It's huge. It's huge. Okay. Most of my life. What are these 12 instruments that you play? Well, now, unfortunately, it's grown. And the reason I say unfortunately is I don't have time to practice like I wish I did. Oh. But um, piano, trumpet, violin, guitar, viola, cello, drums, mallet instruments, trombone, sousaphone, euphonium, flute, clarinet. Like the list just goes on, but I just don't have the time anymore. My favorite instrument is probably the sousaphone out of all those. Well, I mean, I just like tubas. I, I'm just a tuba person. I would like, um, I, if I had to do it over again, maybe I'd choose that instead of the accordion. Well, you'd probably like the music from, I think it's John Philip Sosa. He like wrote for circuses and all of that. Most of it featured tuba and euphoniums. Oh, who? Uh, John name? Philip Sosa. John Philip Sosa. It wrote this... like a bunch of marches, but it was, I want to say like the early 1900s. Oh, okay. I was going to ask you if this person was still living. No, no. Okay. I mean, I think it would be great, but others probably not so much. Yeah. Wait, now go back. So what were the stringed in instruments that you play? Uh, violin, okay. viola, cello, bass, and guitar. Okay. Okay. I see. Do you play the bajo sexto at all? I do not. No. Okay. One of my favorite instrument combinations is the bajo sexto with a tuba. I think that's the most amazing combination. I can I can give or take on the accordion. If it has accordion, I'm probably happier, but that combination is magical to me. Anyway, that was my own little digression into this interview because everybody wants to know. They need to know. Yes. As part of the Roswell musical community, have you joined any bands? You know, I was in like two when I was a little younger, like three, four years ago, okay. right before COVID hit. But it was mainly like with a group of friends. Uh, they played at Big D's Diner a lot, and then they oh. played up in uh, Arabella a lot. What music did you play? What, I mean, what style? It was like classic rock. Classic um, rock. Okay. 90s, early 2000s. Did you do covers or? It was mostly covers. They had like three songs that they wrote their own, but. Oh, who wrote the songs? Uh, it was Sammy. He was the drummer. Okay. Okay. And what instrument did you play in this band? Uh, keyboard and guitar. Keyboard and guitar. Nice. You know, I used to go to that, that diner when it was still around because it's not around anymore, right? No, it closed up. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think it's a pizza center now. Oh, yeah, that used to be a classic rock, Big Big D's, I think. Is that what you yes. called it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that used to be a, a classic Roswell place. You know, they're garlic fries that are guaranteed to give you heartburn, pretty much, <laughs> if you eat the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, they put parsley in it. I think that's to quell the heartburn, but it doesn't really quite work because of the big chunks of garlic. But they were delicious, right? I mean, yeah, you couldn't just have one. Yeah, you had exactly. To eat the whole thing. Exactly. Yeah, Big D's. Gone are the days of Big D's. And apparently your band playing there, too. Yes. What was the name of the band, did you say? You know, I honestly can't even remember. It was like <laughs> oh. Sammy and the Rockers or something like that. Oh, but I like that. Sammy and the Rockers. It's been quite a while. Okay. And you were also a music teacher. Yes. Um, so I gave private lessons, and then I taught at a few private schools for, like, music theory and appreciation. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you are part of the band at Goddard, is it? Roswell High. Roswell so High. I, okay. Um, I'm their drumline technician, so drum I help their technician. drumline learn all their like, new cadences, show music for marching season. Nice. And torture them with marching. Okay. 
Nice. Well, it, and that's why you would play a sousaphone instead of a tuba, right? Because that's the marching kind of tuba? Yes. The sousaphone, like, wraps around and you, like, carry it on your shoulder and neck. Right. So you could play in a parade? Yes. Have you ever played in a parade? Yes, unfortunately. And it was oh. with uh, drums. So they were, like, the big, heavy quints that you have to march with. Oh, what parade was that? Uh, the Eastern New Mexico State Fair Parade. Okay. Yes, that's the big. That's you, the big one if around you can here. Call it a parade. I mean, it just depends where you sit in town. Well, I mean, I think it's a parade. <laughs> I mean, it you... is like if you sit anywhere north of the courthouse, right? But if you sit anywhere south of the courthouse, there's like so many gaps. You have like twenty, thirty, forty minute gaps in it. Oh, because everyone stops at the courthouse to perform, and like right. performances take forever. Right. Yeah, I think that I generally, when I go to the parade, I sit kind of near the coffee shop because I want coffee. Yeah, and that's, you know, before the courthouse, so I don't get to see necessarily the performances. Yes. But it, it seemed like there were like 10,000 cheerleading groups that would tumble up the street. Yes, too many in my opinion. But. Oh. <laughs> And then, and then if you didn't get the band when they were playing, then you just hear the drums rolling up the, the street. And you yes. said you played drums. Yeah. That means you played the entire parade route practically. Yep. Uh, and do you, did you have giant biceps at the time to prove no, it? No, but I had the blisters to prove it and <laughs> um, the back problems to go with it. Because if you ever carry a drum for more than like a block... It, like oh. kills your back. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Because they're like 80 pounds, but like oddly placed. 80 pounds? See, I complain about my accordion and it's only 14 pounds. And it's, <laughs> well, and most of them it's like a harness, so it digs into your shoulders, but then it kills your lower back. Oh, got it. 80 pounds, dang. Yeah, I don't think I could do that. How, it, it, compare that to the weight of your sousaphone. The sousaphone, I'd rather take that than the drum. It seems like the weight is more uh, displayed. Or distributed. Distributed, that's the word I was trying to come up with. Yeah, but I could imagine it would still get kind of tiring carrying it. It would, but like with the sousaphone, you can also like go between like your back supporting it and your arms. Because it's oh. easier to kind of support up between I see. your arms and shoulders and back. Okay. But like with the drum, you can't really... Do that well one time I asked you if you knew any sousaphone player and players and you told me you knew a lot of sousaphone players yes it, 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 this is this confounds me how many sousaphone players are there in Roswell at least 40 at least 40 Wow now why do you think that is well most of them play like with the community band or oh. help out with like the high school stuff okay okay I, I just couldn't imagine a world in which a small town like this has so many sousaphone players. I mean, it's really cool and exciting, and I love the fact that there are that many. I, I just, it, it's so confounding to me a little bit. <laughs> it can be, but you have to, like, find them. Because oh. they, like, don't volunteer it. Oh. You have to, like, hey, I know you play the sousaphone, and then they get the, oh, yeah, why do you want to play but if you just like ask in general, they're, nope, don't know what you're talking about. Why Why do you think that is? I think it's just how Roswell's community is. Oh. Like, half of the community would rather give you money. Okay. Than actually like volunteer, participate, or work for it. Well, I don't know that that's Roswell as much as it is just the way of the world today. Because I think that's everywhere. People would rather just, if they have the money, would rather just give you money instead of volunteering their time. It's a fair point, but I've seen it worse in Roswell than other oh. places. I don't know. Maybe I've just lived here too long, but it it just feels like that's a sign of the times. Nobody wants to do anything, but if they can get you to shut up by giving you money. And, you know, it's so hard to keep groups going at the church for that reason. You know, parishes, they, they run off of volunteers. And, and I know there are parishes that have more volunteers than others because people just don't have money so they're more willing to volunteer their time yes. and maybe that's just what I'm seeing is that I'm kind of in like a little bubble where people have more money than they have time which seems incredible to me although I don't really have any time myself I don't know really 
Yeah, I mean, I can understand that. I don't really have a lot of time. On your business card, it also, uh, okay, so piano tuning, tuning that's really, it, it is technical work. Yes. And you also do tech work here, and I assume tech work elsewhere where you get calls to, to fix the internet. Yes. Do you get calls like somebody's dialing your number, oh, the internet's broken. Yeah. I've had that before, and yeah. I've also had, um, like there was this one lady, she unplugged all of her stuff for her computer. Oh, uh-huh. And that meant she unplugged the router from the wall. Oh. But um, she was using a smart TV. Okay. And she was complaining that it wouldn't work. And um, she didn't want to pay for me to go out there, so we were talking over the phone. And um, I had asked, well, does your router have lights blinking on it? Does it have power? No, I unplugged it. It has a virus. Can routers get viruses? Uh, not really. Yeah, I didn't think so because it seems like... It's more like your device is connected that would get it. Yeah, that's what I would think. And I don't really know much about the internet, but I never really thought about that. I don't, it doesn't really sound possible to me. But what do I know? <laughs> what do I know, really? Okay, but my point in bringing all that up is that you have a lot of this technical work that you do, like tuning pianos, uh, marketing, uh doing setting up people's computers or fixing their internet or what have you right yes but you also have some artistic endeavors and i assume music is an artistic endeavor but there's also graphic art and photography if i remember right is yes. that correct and uh, videography and videography yes. out of those what do you feel is the the artistic pursuit of your heart you know i love the graphic design side oh um because i can um, take like a movie that comes out and take a character and extract them, change a background, um, like redo horrible movie posters that somehow they let out. But anyways, oh. neither here nor there. Um, but then I'm able to put those up on my website and sell those, which usually sell quite well. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to have to get your website and put it in the um, description box because I think that uh, people might be interested in that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, for, give me an example of what you have done for well, graphic I've art. I've got a, um, one of the scary movies that came out, I think last year, year before was The Nun. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah, I so heard about that. <laughs> I've got her as a uh, metal print and the eyes are actually similar to like a glow in the dark. Oh, uh -huh. so they actually follow you and like pierce through the darkness with like this yellow tint and hue. Oh. Um, there's like a few sports cars with fire and different designs like coming out of it, out of the tires. Um, there's a few of wildlife out there, um, like there's one with a wolf and snow and all of that. Have you done anybody's like? Oh, do people still have album covers? Album covers or or book covers or anything like that? Not officially. I've done a lot for like ebook stuff for a few oh, friends. Okay. Um, but it's like the world of prints kind of like dwindling. Mm -hmm. But then you still have like the diehards of, no, I want the actual book in my hands. Right. Well, it's made a comeback because there it, it really is different, you know, than loading a book onto your your uh, kind, well, Kindle. I don't think the, uh, what was the Barnes and Nobles was, was the Nook. That didn't really go anywhere. But this, so the Kindle seems to be the primary one. <clears throat> it's, it, it is different. It's not the same. Um, for a start, Amazon can take your books. They can remove them. Like you're renting them from Amazon, really. You're not, you don't really own them. They can steal them at any time they want to. Hmm. Anyway, that's just a, a uh, <laughs> digression, which I um, tend to go down. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, let's see. Art, tech. Are you a computer hacker? I used to be. You're, you um, used to be. I, I noticed that you're putting it past tense. Maybe that's to protect yourself. <laughs> uh, no, absolutely. Um, like um, in high school, there was a computer lab 
um, and we would go in there to like work on our projects. And I think one of it was like a history project. So I got completely bored and um, our school district, they have it to where the um, teacher can like see everybody else's screens. Oh, uh-huh. So I may or may not have disabled that. Oh, nice. And set every computer screen to the matrix screen so it had like the green numbers flowing down. Oh, nice. And it's like a real simple notepad program that you can write. It's like 10 lines of code. Okay. And if you change one number, the only way to get it to disappear is to unplug the computer because it like sh overrides the shut off switch, the power button, keyboard doesn't work, mouse doesn't work. So you have to just like unplug it. So I may or may not have done that to like 30 computers in a computer lab one time. Okay. Yeah, may or may not have. No admitting. No yeah. admittance. Plausible deniability always. Yes. Yes. I actually, uh, because of your numerous skills, I decided to use you as a model for a book character. What do you think about that, being a book character? I think it'd be great. Yeah, his name's Paco. Love to see how it turns out. Yeah. Well, okay. There, There is a scene where somebody is climbing up the bell tower. Do you think that's possible? It is because I've seen a friend of mine actually do that. Oh, on this bell tower? Yes. Nuh-uh, for real? Yeah, they got like halfway up before like their grip gave out. Okay, so how many feet high is the bell tower? Uh, Just for the like record. Approximately like 40 feet. Oh. 40, 50 feet-ish. All the way up? Not all the way up. That's like just to where you can like get into like the inside where the okay. bell would be. Okay. But you're probably looking at, I want to say like 60 feet. Okay. 60, 65 in total. Okay. I might have exaggerated and said it was 70 feet in my book. Well, it might be. Yeah. Um, All I know is it's big, and I hated every minute being up there. Oh, you have been up there, but you haven't climbed up. No, I haven't climbed up. I was in the lift, yeah. and someone who shall not be named uh -huh. um, decided <laughs> we needed to move the basket a little closer so we could get in there to look at the bell. Mm -hmm. um, that person hit a button, and we dropped like 10 feet, like free fell. Free fell. Yeah, it yeah. just went from like here to boom and you were in a we were in the basket in the lift in the lift mm -hmm. and so we decided right then and there this person who shall not be named is never touching the controls in the lift again oh okay well that's good to know if i ever decide to go up the bell tower in a lift yeah there's actually a scene in my book based off of this story except that instead of two men i decided that i would put a whole bunch of men in the lift <laughs> For just to make it more exciting. What do you think of, about that? I can't wait to read it because I want to <laughs> see the excitement that entails with it. <laughs> you want to see if it's possible for a priest to bless people as they're falling out of the sky? Absolutely. I think that would be hilarious to see in real life. Yeah. <laughs> like, it'd be scary. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, I don't think I could not, like, laugh. And the thing about my books is that even though they're fiction, they're totally real life. Like anything that happens in my book could totally happen in real life. Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you because again, it has to do with the, my book because you know, I'm so focused on my writing. <clears throat> hey, narcissist author here, here I am. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you because you were born and you raised here and you went to high school here, did you ever hang out at the abandoned meat factory? I did not. You did not. I wanted to at a few points in time, but oh, like okay. my friend group was too much of like wimps at the time. Oh, because you were you were in the band gang. Yes, and <laughs> band gang. <laughs> <laughs> but like, um, they would take me with them to like haunted houses and all of that. Because right. My response is always, "Oh, that's not scary." Or if something oh. makes a noise, I want to go and like see what it is. Right. While everyone else wants to run. How many haunted houses are there here in Roswell? Just uh, for the record. Over a hundred. Over a hundred. Yes. That's really kind of creepy. And then the abandoned meat factory is also haunted, from what I've heard. I still want to go see it one time. Okay. But you yourself have not been there. No. Okay. Well, Paco goes. 
Paco goes to the abandoned meat factory. He has stories about seeing ghosts there. So we need to make it a reality. You need to make it a reality. Yes. yes. I actually probably do. I, I don't know. It would probably be considered trespassing. So I won't say that I'm going to go to the meat factory, but I might need to for research. But I, I won't really. So you're not going to go, but mm -hmm. there will be signs that you went. There just, will be signs that Just I put went. it that way. You're not going to officially go, but <laughs> there will be signs like in your books with research that you went. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. Except that I really want to be creative because I want there to be like meat hooks from the ceiling and I've heard there aren't any. That's really disappointing to me. Well, it depends like on the timeline because certain times that may have been the standard and then like as it progressed on and um, got renovated that could have been removed. Okay, and I am coming up to 30 minutes here and I know that my lunch hour is not that long. <sighs> I am going to end the same way I ended my last video, which was really asking for your life philosophy that you want to pass along to the world. You want my audience, albeit as small as it is, what you want my audience to know. Always do what makes you happy and follow your dreams and cultivate it at all times. Okay. All right. I like that life philosophy. And how does that, just to, I know I was going to end it, but how does, how does that uh, play into you being part of the Catholic community here? Uh, it plays in because even if you disagree with something or see something you don't like, you're able to find it as like a compromise, for lack of a better word, and oh. be able to move past it and grow with it. Right. As opposed to, oh... It says this, so I'm done. Oh, right. You you don't use it as a way to to prevent you from doing things, but find a way to do it the right way. Or am Pretty I understanding much. you find correctly? Find a way to do it your way or the right way. Right. It, it, the, in that follows morality and virtue. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. That sounds that sounds good. I like that ending, and so I will. Say goodbye.